Welcome, I'm Paul and I'm going to explain to you how to use teleport service to teleport players, send data and reserve private servers. So if you don't want to read the whole documentation and all of these different teleport methods, don't worry. All of them basically got clamped into the teleport async, which should be used instead. Now to actually use it and teleport players, I've prepared this another place right here and also this button. And overall teleporting is pretty simple, but yeah. If it comes to the documentation, it's written quite badly and well, that's why I'm here. But anyway, so let's add a local script into to the button, name this one TP request, and let's also add a remote event to the replicated storage and name this one request TP. Now I'm just gonna quickly refer to everything. So we get the remote event. Now let's get the button, which is just script.parent, and let's make a local function send TP signal and connect it to the button. So in this script we want to just get the teleportation signal and we also want to receive it somewhere. So we add the script to the server script service, name this one tp receive, make a function on tp request and connect it to the event. And this function takes the player argument, which is a player and doesn't return anything. And here we just want to fire server. So if we go back to the documentation, to the teleporting guide and scroll down to the handling teleport failure, if we read this, this is going to provide us with a save teleport script, which apparently is recommended to use. So I'm gonna just copy it and add a module, name it safetyp and just paste it in. What this script does, it, it tries to teleport the players within the given amount of attempts, because apparently brute forcing is the way to go with teleport service, but yeah. If they call it a safe teleport, I'm assuming it's a safe teleport port, but let's go back to the scripting. So now we just need to require the save teleport script. And now to actually teleport the player. If we see what save teleport returns, it's this function right here, which takes the place ID, the players and the options, which are used in the teleport async method. So that's what we need to give it. So the place ID is the ID of this place right here. This is the place that we want to teleport to. The player list is a table. It's a table that holds the player instance. So right now we can just give it the player. So we just paste in the arguments and that should be everything then. And since we can't play test it in studio, I need to actually just publish the place. Go to right here. This is the starter place and just play it. Because as it's also written in the documentation, teleport service doesn't work in studio. So if you press on the teleport me button, it's gonna teleport us to the another place. And as you can see, we are here now. So that's basically how you teleport a player or players. But this function teleports you to a server, right, which is not reserved. And also it's a randomly selected server, which has enough slots and which is also, I believe, based on location. So it's not a private server or anything. It's just going to teleport you to a random available server. And yeah, if you are enjoying the tutorial so far, then please leave a like. It would really support me and my channel. And it really motivates me to continue doing tutorials for you guys. And yeah, and if you also want to see a tutorial on anything, then you can comment down below. But yeah, back to the video. But now, if you wanted to teleport to a private server, right, you would have to use these teleport options right here as provided in the argument. So I'm just gonna copy this function and name this one on teleport request options. Connect it to the event now. And what we need to do is add teleport options to the save teleport function. And the teleport options is an instance. So we need to do teleport options is equal to instance.new teleport options. If you go back to the documentation and to the properties, the teleport options takes one of these three arguments and none of them can be combined together, so you have to always just use one. The reserved server access code is going to teleport you to a reserved server if you have the access code. Se server instance is just going to teleport you to a specifically chosen server because you have to have the job ID, which is the UUID of the server. And should reserve server is just going to reserve a private server on that request. And like I said, if you try to combine any of these is going to cause an error. So if you want to reserve a server, you have to do teleport options, put the reserve server and set it to true. And I'm just gonna leave you notes right here. So all of this is basically what I just said, right? On the should reserve server, you don't need the access code when you are teleporting to the server for the first time on the first request. But if you want to access it from the other requests, you basically have to provide the server access code. But now, well, how do I get the access code? So the teleport service teleport async method, right? It returns an instance, which is the teleport async result which has the private server ID and reserved server access code. 
So right now, it can return a success or a result, success being if the protected call passed or not, and the result is either an error message or the teleport result. So we basically need to assign them to a variables, and if we print out the private server ID and the reserved server access code, this private server ID is going to be the game private server ID which we can get from the data model inside of the starter place. And the reserved server access code is going to be what we need to use this teleport option. So I'm gonna publish it and run it. So we are in the game now and if I press on the teleport me and go to the server, oh and I should not forget to actually send the teleport options inside of here. So now if I publish it and go to the place, then open the console, go to the server and press on the teleport me, it's going to provide us with two strings, right? This one is the private server ID and the other one is the reserved server access code. So if you wanted to, you could save the reserved server access code inside of a data store or a session data to track if a player went to a private server. So that's for the reserved server access code and should reserved server, right? But there is also the server instance ID and the only way to get it would be from this another place. So you can go to it. And how we get it is basically pretty simple. So let's add a script inside of the server script service. Name this one get server type. Make a server ID variable which is game dot private server ID and the job ID which is game dot job ID. And this job ID is what we need. And to get it from this place, you would have to use a data store or messaging service because it's not returned by the teleport async. And when we are at it, you can also check if the server is a VIP server, a reserved server or a standard server by going back to the documentation, go to the data model tab and get this sample of code right here. So we can also do server type and get server type. So now I'm gonna choose print out the server ID, job ID and the server type and I'm gonna just publish it and now if we teleport to another place and open the console we can see that this is the private server ID, the job ID and it's a reserved server and you'd have to send this job ID like I said within a data store or use messaging service if you wanted other people to also teleport into this server like let's say you had a custom private server system and you wanted someone's friends to join or just like a whitelisted server then yeah you would do it like so but now to actually send some data I'm gonna make a tuple right here and just add a string value and a boolean and copy this function again, name it on teleport request data and connect it right here. To send teleport data, we have to also make teleport options. And teleport options has a method which is called set teleport data. And as we are passing this my data right here in this event, we can also receive it as a tuple in this function and we can set this data right here. Of course, it doesn't have to be a tuple like this one. You can just send whatever data you want. But that's basically it for this function right here. And to receive the data, we have to go back to another place. And I'm going to add another script in the server script storage. Name this one receive TP. And here we need the player service and a on player added function and connect it. So to get the join data, you have to use a method, which is called player get the join data. And this join data also has teleport data, which is join data dot teleport data. So you can print out the teleport data, right? But it's going to print out a table with a random index. So I'm gonna add a loop, which is for index value in pairs tp data do. It prints out the index and then the value. So again, I'm gonna publish it here and I'm gonna publish this place also. And of course I got an error again because I forgot to send the teleport data. I mean teleport options right here. Anyway, I have to do the process over again. But now if you teleport to this place, go to the server. Why am I stupid in print in pairs? <laughs> oh my god. This tutorial is just something special. Now if you open the console after teleporting and go to the server, you can see that it printed out string 5 and true. So that's how you send teleport data on the server but you can also do it on the client and how do you do it on the client well you go to a local script you get the teleport service and you can make a variable that is alive set to true then use the teleport service method called set teleport setting and it's the same as adding an attribute so you can name this one alive and pass the is alive variable and now to receive the teleport setting, we go into this place again, add a local script, name this one receive setting, and get teleport service again, and use another method called get teleport setting and alive. 
So then you can print out alive and is alive value. And I'm gonna publish it again and I'm gonna teleport. And if I open the console, you can see that alive is set to true and it's in the client and not the server tab. That means it's from a local script. And that's basically everything. Like I said, I've covered teleporting players, making a research server and also sending data on both the server and the client. And yeah, that basically makes it. So if you found this tutorial informative, then make sure to subscribe. And that's gonna be everything for today. So see ya guys.